Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today, we are going to discuss some multiple choice questions in gynecology. Okay. Choose the one best response. Let us start with the first question. Vaginal discharge, that is cottage cheese-like in appearance, is a common sign of vaginal discharge, that is cottage cheese-like in appearance, is a common sign of pelvic inflammatory disease or trichomonas vaginitis or atrophic vaginitis or candida albicans infection. Of course, it is characteristic of candida albicain infection or monelial infection, monelial vaginitis. It is odorless associated with itching and cheese-like appearance of the discharge. Let us go to the next question. What change is expected to occur in the basal temperature during ovulation? What change is expected to occur in the basal temperature during ovulation? Slight drop, then rises. Sudden rise, and then drops. Marked rise, and remains high. Marked drop, and remains lower. The right answer is slight drop and then rise. We know that it is biphasic. Slight drop first, then rise about 0.2 degrees centigrade. Okay? Let us go to the next question. Timing of measuring serum progesterone to detect ovulation in relation to the menstrual cycle. Timing of measuring serum progesterone to detect ovulation in relation to the menstrual cycle. Is it day 3 of the cycle or day 8 of the cycle or day 14 or day 21 or day 26? Of course, the middle UTL or day 21 is the right answer to measure the serum progesterone to detect ovulation. Let us go to the next question. Which nerve provides sensation to the skin over the suprapubic area? Again, which nerve provides sensation to the skin over the suprapubic area? Is it superior hypogastric plexus? Iliohypogastric nerve, ilioinguinal nerve, budendal nerve, or femoral nerve. This area is supplied by, let us think about it, iliohypogastric nerve is the right answer. Yes. And you should take care during any surgery. In the pelvic surgery, when we do incision in the abdomen and while we are going to close the abdomen to avoid entrapping of the iliohypogastric nerve. Okay. Let us go to the next. A 29-year-old woman with confirmed diagnosis of pelvic inflammatory disease presents with right uh, upper quadrant pain. What is the most likely etiology? Again, a 29 year old woman with confirmed diagnosis of pelvic inflammatory disease present with right upper quadrant pain. What is the most likely etiology? Cholecystitis, nephrolysis, Perihepatic abscess, Asherman syndrome, Fitzhugh-Kertz syndrome. 
as we know BID is one of complication of sexually transmitted disease may occur due to chlamydial infection and may be complicated by fitz hog curtis syndrome with perihepatic adhesion and right upper quadrant pain so the right answer is fitz hog curtis syndrome perihepatitis with adhesions and uh, pain in the right hypochondrial region next question which of the following adenexal masses is derived from all three germ cell layers? Again, which of the following adenexal masses is derived from all three germ cell layers? Ovulation, uh, sorry, ovarian fibroma, Gartner cyst, hydrosalvings, endometrioma, or mature cystic teratoma of course the right answer is mature cystic teratoma because it is derived from all three germ cell and you can find in mature cystic teratoma or dermoid cyst you can find skin hair teeth bone cartilage and so on go to the next question identify which of the following is true with regard to pubertal development pregnancy is not possible until regular menstruation occurs adrenarche is the beginning of breast development Menarche is the first manifestation of puberty in the female. Lastly, development of menstrual cycle is dependent upon GnRH pulses increasing in amplitude and frequency. Okay, I'll say the all senses again and we'll say which is false or true because we need here the true one only one of these sentence is true pregnancy is not possible until regular menstruation occurs false adrenarche is the beginning of breast development false menarche is the first manifestation of puberty in the female false development of the menstrual cycle is dependent upon gnrh pulses increasing in amplitude and the frequency this is true so this is the right answer d go to the next as regard to heavy menstrual bleeding which of the following statements is true again as regard to heavy menstrual bleeding which of the following statement is true first clinically heavy menstrual bleeding can be defined as excessive menstrual blood loss that interferes with a woman's physical emotional and social quality of life second it is necessary to demonstrate that woman losses more than 40 milli menstrual cycle per menstrual cycle to diagnose heavy menstrual bleeding endometrial and cervical malignancy are common causes of human of heavy menstrual bleeding first line medical treatment is the levonorgestrel intrauterine system okay i repeat the sentence and i'll say which is true and which is false of course we need here the true one okay the best one response will be the true one okay let's start with the first sentence clinically heavy menstrual bleeding can be defined as excessive menstrual blood loss that interferes with woman physical emotional social quality of life this is true so this is the best one response 
The second sentence, uh, sentence it is necessary to demonstrate that women's loss more than 40 milli per menstrual cycle to diagnose heavy menstrual bleeding is it is false of course because the normal up to 80 milli so this is false endometrial cervical malignancy are common causes of heavy menstrual bleeding this is false first line medical treatment is the levonorgestrel intrauterine system this is false so the best one response is a clinically heavy menstrual bleeding can be defined as excessive menstrual blood loss that interferes with women's physical emotional and social quality of life next gynecologic examination should include examination of general health breast examination abdomen examination pelvic digital examination it's an easy question of course pelvic digital examination is the best one response next question please an 18 year old girl present with fever 39 degree associated with nausea generalized malaise and pelvic pain a few days after unprotected intercourse okay what is the most likely diagnosis again the question this time an 18 year old girl present with fever 39 degree nausea generalized malaise and pelvic pain a few days after unprotected intercourse what is the most likely diagnosis trichomoniasis primary herpes simplex infection cephalus parcel and gland abscess lymphogranuloma venereum okay let us think about it the best one response here is primary herpes simplex infection and be careful we are saying here primary and the primary effect of herbal semblance this is the first time to be infected with herbs okay maybe associated yes with fever with general symptoms like fever malaise nausea and so on okay and pelvic pain and why after few days after unprotected intercourse because it is sexually transmitted okay so the best one response here is a primary herpes simplex infection. Thank you. Please remember my three books, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, and contraception hand pack. And the newcomer recently published on Amazon, the fourth book belong to me is MCQ book this one published recently on Amazon so I have four books now you can find them on my site on Amazon as a user this is the link of my site I hope it will be beneficial each one of them will be beneficial for you thank you